deal, girl. I got to congratulate you. <laughs> Each year, Americans throw away an astounding 100 billion plastic grocery bags. Most municipal recycling programs no longer accept plastic bags in curbside pickup, so they end up either in landfills, being burned at waste-to-energy plants, or litter. So it's made from a petrochemical, or as I used to like to say to my kids, dead dinosaurs. It's called low-density polyethylene, or LDPE. I mean, they're made at a big chemical factory that takes in petrochemicals, cooks them up, and extrudes them into a plastic bag. Side products of production of the plastic that end up in the water are even more damaging than the plastic bag itself. PCBs and some other, uh, like uh, dioxins specifically, what comes into producing the plastic bag that ends up in those industrial wastewaters can be, or air, uh, and emissions can be even more damaging. Plastic bags, depending on the size, they can uh, really damage uh, an animal or fish or shark and larger fish physically. There'll be a huge problem specifically to turtles, marine turtles, because they will mistake them, as everybody knows, uh, for jellyfish. They basically physically damage the animal because they can't digest the food, they can't feed themselves anymore. They're basically plugged, the whole intestine is plugged. Uh, by uh, plastic bags. They do sometimes when they find a dead animal, find a lot of plastic in them. They don't break down at all. I mean, if you went time traveling, came back in a couple thousand years and dug up a landfill, you'd find not only plastic bags, but plastic bags that you could probably wash and use. You know, those, those landfills that the amount of plastic that they produce each year, like in the United States, they're estimating that 90, 90 billions of plastic bags are basically produce every year. Don't, they can't find them in the landfills. So there was like a big mystique, like a twilight zone, where, where does the plastic go? Until, you know, recently, Captain Moore actually got into that jar, that North Pacific jar, and all he saw in the middle of the ocean, Pacific Ocean, was garbage. Plastic, mainly plastic garbage. At some point, there is no more space to dump all the garbage. So products that don't biodegrade, products that don't break down quickly in landfills, are consuming space. These days, with landfill space running out, plastic grocery bags are more likely to be taken to what's called waste-to-energy plants, where garbage is burned and turned into electricity. According to the EPA, plastic production uses five of the six top-listed chemicals that generate toxic waste. Some say burning plastic spells disaster for the atmosphere. That's harmful because it releases a lot of toxins into the environment. You know, anytime you burn something, you're going to release smoke, but it's the molecules that are in that smoke that are the problem, and there's a lot of toxins when you burn plastic. You don't have to really be a scientist. All you have to do is smell burning plastic to know that it's not good. The most visible harm that plastic grocery bags cause to the environment? Litter. Um, we, we get calls about storm drains that are clogged. Boston Water and Sewer has to go out and cleans the storm drains and pulls these bags out. So as much as it's an environmental issue, which clearly that's the movement and, and we know the, the, the problems and the risks associated with that, it's as much for me, a district city council, a quality of life issue, a litter issue, and a taxpayer issue. We're a very suburban urban community and we, we're very big on street trees and we have thousands of street trees in our neighborhoods which are loved by people. What's happening is that these plastic bags are getting caught in the street trees. They cause damage to the trees and to the leaves and their ability of the leaves to bloom. But they're just ugly. So constituents call our office and ask us to have the plastic bags removed from the trees in front of their house. Believe it or not, we get the calls here all the time for that. I live on a third floor of a triple decker in Waltham. And when I look out my front window, there's a tree that's had a couple plastic bags in it. I think as long as I've lived there, and I've been there about eight years. Um, so even exposed to all that weather, eight winters, snow, rain, wind, everything, they're still there and they're still going strong. EPA research shows that only about 5% of plastic bags are recycled. Municipal recycling programs often do not accept them in curbside pickups. They're so fine that you cannot get a product really after they're recycled. The lighter things are, the more difficult it is to make it cost effective to collect them. They haven't found an efficient or haven't invested in, in the system here to collect those bags. Traditionally, you mix your cans and bottles together, goes onto the floor where it's tipped, 
up a conveyor belt, and then there's a combination of humans and mechanical separation of the material. Other parts of the country, there is a hand pick of the bag off the line that just hasn't happened here on the, on the East Coast. And it also can get stuck in some of the processing machinery. You have little wheels running the conveyor belt, and you haven't designed the right conveyor belt, it's, the plastic's going to get stuck in there. The rotary screens where they tumble out the glass, the plastic bags can get stuck in, in, in that kind of equipment. It costs roughly $4,000 to recycle a ton of plastic bags. It's, it's very expensive to recycle. It's very expensive. At, four, at four, what, $4,000 per ton? I mean, that's a rough estimate. I mean, that's terrible. Right now, we in Brookline tell our residents to take them back to the supermarkets because the recycling plant doesn't accept them. Even though stores say we recycle them, um, I question that, and that's a debate we've had in this office with all the retailers, because the city of Boston's own website tells you that you cannot put these plastic bags in your blue recycling bin. What kind of a message does that send that we're telling the residents and the taxpayers of the city do not put plastic bags in there? You're on your own. So why is it that the stores can recycle them effectively, if they are at all, but the city's major bulk recycler is saying don't give them to us because we can't recycle them? There's a real issue there with that. It speaks to the question of what's actually happening with those bags when you take them back to the store. Are they just being put in a dumpster and thrown out? Uh, I'd be willing to bet that, that, a lot, that a lot of that is going on. In my opinion, plastic bags should be outlawed and they should go to reusable bags. Reusable bags are in every single department store now, in every single supermarket. Plastic bags are a thing of the past now. That's how I would look at it. Ed's not the only one who thinks bags should be a thing of the past. Legislation is currently on the books that, if passed, would ban plastic grocery bags in Boston, Massachusetts. In 2007 uh, was a proposal to ban the use of plastic bags in large retail supermarket stores. It's raised a whole slew of uh, jurisdictional and legal issues that we need to clarify to make sure that we're targeting the true intent of what we want, and that's the smaller plastic bags that you see floating around in the air, stuck in trees, or clogging our storm drains. So it always comes down to money, and it always comes down to cost. The industry is vehemently against it. It's going to be much more expensive for them to get rid of the plastic bags. It's going to be, it's much more cost efficient for them to have the bags. There will obviously be a point where some industry parties do not want this to move forward. Those in the plastic industry, those in the retail industry who have come in here and lobbied against it. But we'll agree to disagree at that point. I think you'll see an immediate response in terms of litter, and an immediate response in terms of our storm drains, and an immediate positive response in terms of uh, bags floating in the uh, Boston Harbor and in our Neponset River and the Charles River and the Mother Brook. Once the, the bags are phased out, you will see an immediate effect on our ocean and marine life. An outright ban is one approach to solving the problem, but others hold a different view, citing paper bags as being just as detrimental to the environment. When we took a look at the research, Basically, if we were getting rid of plastic bags, the only alternative for people who didn't bring their own would be paper bags, and the effect of, on the environment would have been, I think, horrific. They're very expensive to buy, and like I say, the effect on the environment, the amount of water that's used to turn a tree into a paper bag, they are better in the waste stream and that they will biodegrade a lot quicker. But the fact that it takes so many trees to make so many bags at a time when we need more trees, not less, was really the effect. We switched over to a new plastic bag, which is actually made from natural gas rather than oil. It's called an eco-hippo bag. It's not perfect because it's still not a renewable resource, but it's a lot less toxic on the environment. We encourage people to bring their own bags. We have a 10 cent bag rebate if you bring your own bags. And that includes your own plastic bags, paper bags, bags from another store, backpacks, whatever. Do you want this in paper or plastic? Oh, actually, I got mine. I think it's the culture in this country that you expect someone to give you a bag when you go shopping. When you go over to Europe or someplace like that, you're expected to bring your own bag, and I think most people do. We have over 3,000 members in the Boston and Cambridge area, and they're very vocal about how they want us to treat the food, how they want us to treat the earth, and how they want us to act. I think from an education perspective that if you can get people to realize that you can recycle them if you bring them back to the stores, and that there is a program and an infrastructure that's been set up to handle that, it may be appropriate to continue to use them. Yeah, it's about being a selective shopper and being careful about what you bring into your house and, and, and how, you, how you shop. 
it, it speaks to the long-term future, just not for me, but for generations after me, is what do we do with our trash? Uh, and that's, uh, that's something that's a major concern and a major issue. Just walk or drive anywhere, there's plastic <laughs> bags all over the bushes and trees and vegetation. But, you know, like, I think it, it's good to point the problem, but if you don't also bring the solution to that, it's not going to make a change or a difference. So we offer our residents with these recycled reusable bags, which are for Brookline residents to stop using the plastic bags. Environmentally, right now, the landfill, there is no landfill space. Um, so to reuse products is the most important thing that people can do right now. If your bags are plastic, you're not fantastic. To be honest, you're kind of a jerk. The environment needs you, so I heed you to carry a reusable bag. Don't think that a few of us can make a difference just a little at a time. It starts with you and me, then friends and family and see. They're totally sustainable, they're easily obtainable, they're 99 cents at the rack, just the nearest you. Don't be pretentious, try being conscientious, 